Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Vidushi and in this video, I'm going to explain how to do kinetic Monte Carlo simulations on a graphene lattice. That means I'm going to explain how I constructed a graphene lattice and did kinetic Monte Carlo simulations on that. Uh, the most importantly, this video is an extension of my previous video where I explained how to do adsorption and desorption on a 2D square lattice. So I explained the entire concept of Kintic Monte Carlo and how I involved periodicity into my lattice in that video. So if you are new to this channel and you have not watched that video, please go and watch that first. I will share the link in the description section below. Another thing, uh, all the concepts that I will talk about today in this video, I have also covered them in a chapter, Monte Carlo Simulation Methods on 2D Materials in this book that you see on your screens right now. Uh, this book covers uh, characterization, synthesis and modeling on 2D materials. So if you work on 2D materials, please book your copies. This book will be out on 26 June 2020. So with this, I'll move on to our problem on graphene right now. What is graphene? The three sheets you see simulating on the right are three graphene sheets. Graphene is composed of all carbon atoms that are sp2 hybridized. To start off where it comes from, it is easier to say pencil. Who is not aware of graphite? Graphite is nothing but graphene sheets stacked together. When one layer is separated from graphite, it is graphene. And now the question is, why am I modeling adsorption desorption on graphene? Graphene is employed so extensively from hydrogen storage to sensors and catalysis that any lecture on utility of graphene will be small. I will share some basic study material on graphene in the description section below. Atom adsorption desorption kinetics on graphene is something that impacts all its applications and is most often investigated by computational simulations. So in this video, I will share my approach to model adsorption desorption using KMC on graphene lattice. Of course, every individual can have their own different approach. Anyone who has any different ideas, please share with us in the comment section below so that we can follow up and learn. Now, in my previous video, I was modeling adsorption desorption on a 2D square lattice. This 2D square lattice was represented by a matrix called L. Basically, L matrix stored sites where atoms were adsorbed. Therefore, this L matrix and this 2D square grid that you see on your screen, it represents the sites where the atoms can be adsorbed. What we did not model was the surface of adsorbate. We assumed the existence of adsorbate and incorporated its influence in the rate constants, but we did not model atom locations of adsorbate. So what do we do when we have a specific lattice structure? Then we need to incorporate the location of our substrate. In that case, we first create a grid to locate atom positions in a substrate, graphene here. We call this primary lattice. Then based on our primary lattice, we create a second grid. This will consist of sites where atom can be adsorbed or desorbed from on the primary lattice and we call this secondary lattice. Of course, we will assume atoms on the primary lattice remain constant while the atoms on the secondary lattice will change during our KMC simulations. Therefore, we will add an additional matrix in our MATLAB code G, which will contain atom positions of carbon atoms. And the L matrix will again store the locations of adsorbing and desorbing atoms as in our previous video. Now, one of this matrix will be outside the main Monte Carlo loop, while the other one will be inside. Can you guess which one will be outside? Of course, G matrix will be the one which will be outside the main Monte Carlo loop. That is because graphene atoms are constant. They are not changing their locations as the system moves from one state to another due to adsorbing and desorbing atoms. L matrix on the other hand stays inside the main Monte Carlo loop. The process for L matrix will remain same as it was in the previous video. Now note that for our depiction, we have shown secondary lattice to be like a square, but it need not be. Secondary lattice will be constructed based on the sites of adsorption on primary lattice. So secondary lattice can be customized according to the adsorption sites on the primary lattice. I will discuss this in the further sections. So in this video, I will first explain how I constructed the primary lattice for graphene. Then I will discuss the sites of adsorption on graphene surface. Then I'll describe how to customize your secondary lattice based upon your approach to solve your adsorption problem. I will follow three cases, basic adsorption, 
adsorbent specific adsorption and site specific adsorption. So I'll explain here how I constructed my primary lattice of graphene and located locations of carbon atoms on the lattice. Based on literature survey, I first determined what are bond lengths in graphene. At what distances these carbon atoms are located from one another. So as we all know, carbon atoms are arranged hexagonally with each other at distance of about 1.42 angstrom. The distance between the centers of two consecutive hexagons is about 2.45 angstroms. This is also the lattice constant of graphene. Based on this information, I materialized a mesh. This is a basic mesh of each unit of A by B dimensions. Based on all these information that I derived from literature survey, I chose my A to be 0.71 and B to be 1.225. This choice of A and B for this basic unit mesh were crucial as it gave me simplicity in designing my further primary and second lattices. Now once I determined the values of A and B for basic mesh, now the question was what should be the size of my graphing sheet? For this purpose, I considered one unit of graphene. So this unit consisted of 5a in x and 2b in y dimensions and this each unit consisted about four carbon atoms as you see in this image here. Now if you consider this unit to be simple matrix of two rows and five columns you will see that the four carbon atoms are located at the location 1 1, 1 5, 2 2 and 2 4. To get a full-fledged graphene matrix, I extended this small unit graphene 5 times in X and 5 times in Y to get the structure that is shown here. This way we get the locations of carbon atoms in this mesh which I saved in a matrix G. Now of course these repetitions were made according to the code. You can increase the number of repetitions. Most importantly while you create graphene primary lattice, please remember the concept of periodicity. I discussed this concept in detail in my previous video. You would want your lattice graphene to look periodic during simulations. All you have to do is add two additional rows and columns to your primary matrix and reciprocate atoms at one end to the other. This will ensure that neighboring atoms remain in their place. Now that you have locations of carbon atoms in graphene that constitute your primary lattice, what next? Let's discuss the sites of adsorption on graphene. So we have six carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice. In this, there are three different type of adsorption sites. First of these is at the top of carbon atom. Atom can adsorb right at the top of carbon atom and this site is called top site. Second site for any atom to adsorb will be one in the middle of the six carbon atoms that is the center of hexagon. This site is called hexagonal site. Atom that bind to the carbon atoms will prefer top site while the atoms that avoid steric hindrance will prefer hexagonal site. And the last option is an atom can adsorb in the middle of two carbon atoms. This site is called bridge site. There are several studies which are reported on atoms adsorbing on graphene surface and their preferred sites of adsorptions. As you can see, majority of the atoms prefer hexagonal site, non-metals prefer top site, and group 15 to 16 elements prefer bridge site. It is easier to target adsorption sites with appropriate literature survey. With this information, let us try to model adsorption of lithium on graphene lattice. To model adsorption of lithium on graphene, we first need rate of adsorption of lithium at three different sites. Let us assume that lithium adsorbs at H site with rate Rh, T site with rate Rt and B site with rate Rb. Now with the help of the unit mesh which we previously explained and primary lattice we will construct a secondary lattice of sites which will have all the possible sites of adsorption. Please excuse me if I missed some adsorption site here. This is just for the schematic explanation of how we will try to cover all the possible sites where the adsorption is possible. Now once we have the secondary lattice of all the sites of adsorption, we classify these sites into three subclasses of cases. So all the H site will go for case 1, all the B site will go to case 2 and all the T sites will go to case 3. Based on the rate of adsorption on these sites, we will tabulate probability distribution and then based upon the weight of probability, randomly one of the three cases will be selected. 
over here case 1 was selected based upon its probability and we determined that adsorption should happen at edge site then all the locations of edge site were tabulated and randomly one site was selected and the event occurred there we call this method adsorbent specific adsorption as we tabulated rates based on different adsorption rates of one atom at different location in a single code we try to include the adsorption of lithium on all sites H, B and T. Now this can get too complicated if near neighbor interactions are included. We will need for each of the three cases number of neighboring sites, an effect of count of neighboring atoms on adsorption desorption rates. Therefore, our rate catalog will be too big and complicated in our MATLAB code. Now to avoid this, we can adopt another method which is called site specific adsorption. What is site specific adsorption? Remember, our atoms had preferred sites for adsorption. For example, lithium has preference to adsorb on hexagonal site. So now in our secondary lattice, we will consider only the hexagonal sites on graphene lattice and we will have only one adsorption rate which is Rh. This Rh already considers the influence of neighboring six carbon atoms. What we do need now is consider the influence of neighboring adsorbing atoms. For desorption, we can easily include the influence of neighboring adsorbed atoms if present at any of the neighboring sites as shown in green over here. We can do that as we did in the case of 2D square lattice very easily. We can take rate of desorption Rd when no neighbors are present. When neighbors are present, we can add an additional parameter alpha which denotes the strength of near neighbor interaction and we take it to the power i where i is the number of neighboring atoms. This approach simplifies our rate catalog by many folds and enables us to include many details in a single KMC simulation. Now of course, if we still need to model adsorption at all three sites, we can do site specific adsorption for three different type of sites separately in a KMC run and then compile the kinetics later manually. Thank you for watching this. I hope you liked it. And in the next video, I will define how to determine rate constants for your Kinetic Monte Carlo simulations. So if you want to get notifications, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you once again.